Hello and welcome to Wednesday's first look, our unboxing series, where we take a look at something exciting. And in this case, it's not exactly new, but it is exciting. And it is Tokamak, the utility for sustainable liquidity. Liquidity is a big topic right now. I actually said on Twitter, liquidity mining is dead. Obviously provocative. But when we see the likes of Olympus Pro, and projects like Alchemix moving rapidly into buying bonds and getting goosebumps about Tokamak, then I think we should take notice. And we will, right after this message from our sponsors. Don't let high gas costs keep you out of Ethereum. A balance of the gas-optimized vault architecture makes trading cheaper than anywhere else. Liquidity providers can optimize their fee earnings using the dynamic fee system that automatically adjusts to market conditions. You can also use asset managers to lend out idle assets, dramatically increasing your capital efficiency. And because Balancer is an open platform for flexible automated markets, you can choose from stable pools or weighted pools, and in the future more designs will be created that they don't even know about yet. Check it out at Balancer. Dot five. Ava, or is it Ava? I think it's Ava. Fun fact, that name is taken from the Finnish word for ghost, but there's nothing mysterious and weird about Ava. It is in fact a decentralized open source and non-custodial liquidity protocol on Ethereum. Depositors earn interest by providing liquidity to lending pools, while borrowers can obtain loans by tapping into these pools with variable and stable interest rate options. Deposit in Ava protocol and receive a tokens, which accrue interest every second right in your wallet. Seriously, you can watch your balance just going every second. Swap any of your deposited assets at any time to get the best yields on the market. And for the devs out there, Ava features access to DeFi building blocks like flashlines and credit delegation. Ava protocol liquidity pools are now available on Ethereum and the sidechain Polygon. So here it is, Tokamak, a reactor, a core, there's some crazy stuff going on here. Let's talk about the liquidity vortex. This is the message from Scoopy Drupal's the head honcho at Alchemix. He says, on to the next protocol that makes me get goosebumps, Token Reactor. They also aim to solve the liquidity problem in DeFi by making the renting of liquidity a lot more efficient than having a pool too. And then below that, we have some tweets from SBF. Geez, the desperation of people when their projects' tokens go down in price is really sad. Guys, it happens. It's not the whales. It's not a cabal. I meant it primarily to refer to desperate project founders and influencers who are throwing random blame around. What's this all about? Well, Alchemix is moving to a bond system to own their own liquidity using Olympus Pro. Now, normally what happens is you rent liquidity effectively from LPs. And for instance, SBF, Alameda, they go in hard on projects and own an enormous number of tokens. And then what happens? Well, they dump them. So there's been quite a lot of talk about toxic liquidity from the likes of, well, Alameda. Who knew? Uh, there was the deal with Reef, uh, where it looks like there was some threats to dump tokens. But then also recently, Divergence Ventures gaming the airdrop on Ribbon Finance. They actually returned the money, but what it shows you is that VCs understand that this is a game. Big traders like Alameda understand this is a game, and they play it really, really well. The problem is, <clears throat> for a protocol, not so good. So the analogy I make is, well, here's a high-end cinema camera. This is an item that you do not need to buy. This is an item that you rent and you use it for a day and then you're good. That's kind of the situation we're in at the moment. The protocols have to rent the equipment. They have to rent the liquidity and liquidity is essential for them to do their day-to-day -day operations. Here at the office, we need this equipment on a day-to-day -day basis, so we have to buy it. And then to do that, we take on debt and we finance the equipment, but essentially it is our equipment so we can decide to do with it what we want. And everything that we use here is owned by us. So no rental, no issue with uh, having to give the equipment back and then paying a lot to have it. It's just very much exacerbated in crypto at the moment. And liquidity is basically the, the essential fuel that drives everything. Without liquidity, there is no crypto. So that brings us to Tokamak, which aims to solve that problem by becoming effectively a decentralized market maker. So a Tokamak itself is a reactor that's used in nuclear fusion for the magnetic confinement of plasma. And inside the Tokamak, gases are heated to the point that they ionize into plasma and energy is produced through the fusion of atoms. 
Analogous to this, the token mark has been architected to gather idle tokens in order to seamlessly generate and deploy sustainable liquidity. So this is what token mark is doing. It's saying there's a bunch of liquidity out there. It's idle. Come and use it properly. Now, this is kind of familiar. We know from using Uniswap that LPing can be a profitable business for anyone that wants to do that. What Tokamak is aiming to do is take that and make it a lot more holistic and wholesome for the protocols themselves. Because standing up a liquidity pool, uh, setting up um, the ETH, buying the, acquiring the ETH that you need to do that, is ah, it's expensive and it's difficult. Whereas what Tokamak is doing is saying we can pull liquidity in a way that you only need to supply your tokens. So <clears throat> here's the pitch. Tokamak creates sustainable DeFi liquidity in capital-efficient markets through a convenient, decentralized market-making protocol. <clears throat> so they say it's sustainably produced, not powered by inflationary means. Now, we have seen the likes of liquidity farms, you know, farming 200,000% APYs. Is that sustainable? No, of course it's not. But these are the incentives that are on offer for us to provide liquidity. And of course, at a certain point, those run out. And then all the liquidity just runs away because the protocols themselves have no control over you, the liquidity provider. They can only offer you incentives to the point where those incentives run out and then you'll just be on to the next opportunity. The liquidity on Tokamak is dem democratically sourced. It's capital efficient. It's super fluid. So it flows to markets where it's most beneficial and it encourages a deep accumulation of assets to reduce slippage towards zero. So here's some of the things about Tokamak. Normally, if you're a project, you need to budget for staking emissions, you need to create enough uh, Uniswap liquidity, and you need to buy enough ETH to be able to pair with your token to fuel uh, any transactions that, that need to happen. What Tokamak will do is they'll provide the ETH pairing and pool incentives for you. You just provide your token to that pool. And that means that you save half your budget, so you don't have to go and buy an equal amount of ETH for all the tokens that you want to put onto the market. That's a good thing. And you also don't need to worry about market making because Tokamak takes care of that as well. The other thing is <laughs> you don't need to juggle LP tokens. You can drop tokens directly into the protocol. We'll look at that in a second. But Tokamak themselves has kind of pinpointed who might be wanting to use this. Liquidity providers. So you can deposit a single asset into the network so you don't have to deposit pairs or LP tokens. They say DAOs can also harness Tokamak's liquidity flow in order to strengthen direct liquidity for their project, offering an alternative to traditional liquidity mining. New DeFi projects will be able to inexpensively stand up their own token reactors and use the Tokamax protocol's controlled assets to generate healthy liquidity for their project from its inception. So no more 100,000% APYs, but just a really healthy, steady injection of your own token into the market. Market makers themselves can take advantage of the assets that are embedded in the protocol to direct liquidity across various exchanges. So there's a communal pool of ETH and that can be directed to different places. And then exchanges themselves can also leverage that depth of liquidity to bolster their own reserves in the market as well, which is kind of exciting. So there's basically, there's a healthy pool of liquidity that's been aggregated that can be directed wherever you want, rather than having to be kind of harnessed or shackled to the performance of one specific and particular asset. So in its simplest form, users are playing a game of balancing the reactors. And the reactors essentially, for instance, there's a Frax pool or there's a uh, Alchemix reactor. And these are basically collateralized kind of baskets of liquidity, essentially. And there is a TOK token as well, which kind of functions like the Ava token. And this is Tokamak's way of mitigating impermanent loss. We'll come on to that in a second. So the game here is to balance the value of assets deposited and the value and then the amount of TOKE staked through a variable APY. So you want ETH or ACLX deposited in the reactors, but you also need TOKE because the TOKE token is how you vote on what will be the next reactors that get spun up and it will also be used to direct liquidity to wherever it's required. So liquidity providers deposit assets into a token reactor. Those LPs will earn yield on their single asset deposits in the form of TOKE. So you deposit an asset, you get TOKE. Liquidity directors, they use TOKE to control liquidity direction. So they stake their TOKE, and then they use that stake as voting power to direct liquidity to an exchange of their choosing. So um, 
depending on what the protocol needs, they might say, oh, you know what, actually we need to direct liquidity over here. They use the TOKE token to do that. Uh, the more TOKE a reactor has dedicated to it, the more the reactor can direct the available liquidity to that token. The cool thing is that liquidity directors are incentivized for providing the right amount of liquidity. If liquidity is high but volume low, it means you've allocated too much liquidity and vice versa. The trick is to get it just right. So the game theory is about balancing both sides of the equation. There we go. <clears throat> so core, what is core? Well, core is the collateralization of reactors event. This was the first one of its kind. 42 projects entered the core. And this was basically, uh, all of these projects said, we want this service, we want the liquidity, and we would like you to vote for us. And so people did. Uh, you can see a list of who, of who was in there. And th this is like legit projects. We have 0x, we have one inch, other, Bund, Matic, YGG, Sushi, like serious DeFi projects. And it's remarkable looking at this list, how many on there are considered legit. This space has grown immensely, but not all of them were actually uh, successfully voted on. In fact, only five projects were successfully voted on. Frax, Alchemix, Tracer. We actually covered Tracer in last week's first look. Olympus Dow, one of those projects that just, yeah, looks exciting. And then Sushi. So these are the first five reactor candidates. And if you remember, a reactor is basically just a compressed pool of liquidity. And these are now active and are being spun up. So it's going to be exciting to see where Tokamak goes next. I'm increasingly aware of how unsustainable liquidity mining has become and what powered the DeFi summer of last year can't be what powers it through a bear market. There is going to necessarily be a contraction of available liquidity as a bear market hits because a bear market will always hit. It's just the nature of the beast. The halving cannot be escaped. So what do you do in that case? And it's, again, I've been just following what Scoopy Truples has been saying about his journey with Archimix into bonds and into Tokamak to enable their liquidity provision and their liquidity pools to be more stable, more accessible, and more community owned. That's the point here, um, to kind of, extract themselves from the predatory VC play where it's just mine the thing until it's dead and then move on and dump relentlessly because you don't care. Uh, they may well care, but it doesn't look like they do. So what's next on the journey? Well, October 13th, the Git book will be released and I actually looked for the documentation on Tokamak and there wasn't any, which is a shame because that's normally where I find most of the information that I need. Uh, and I hope I explained it kind of correctly today. Then uh, the week of October 18th, TFXS, TALCX, TTCR and TOM and TSUSHI pools will go live for LP deposit. So um, if you're wondering what those are, uh, you basically deposit an asset into a pool and you are returned a one-to-one -one ratio of a T asset version of that. So TFXS is just basically a claim on what's in the pool one-to-one. -one. Uh, and then week of November the 1st, core two. So um, all of these projects that we saw previously, they were voted on and there were tokens staked into those pools. Um, those tokens are still valid for the next round of voting. So and I believe that the tokens that were in there will actually count for double if you keep them in there. So uh, there'll be an opportunity for those projects to level up. Uh, liquidity direction goes live mid-November. That's the really exciting bit. So we'll start to see flow of liquidity to where it's needed. And I'm sure it's going to be flaky as hell when it first starts. But you know, presumably what's going to happen is that strategies around liquidity direction will mature at pace. And once we see that in a live environment, uh, it's going to be really exciting to see whether it actually works, whether the idea actually can function. But this way of mitigating impermanent loss through the use of the TOKE token, um, because these guys are uh, geniuses, is kind of cool. Um, what else do we know? Um, liquidity provided it was market neutral, no dumping of the token. That's, yeah, that's... That's the thing that just uh, it's got to eat you alive if you're a protocol owner. You put all this work into creating and standing up pools and making liquidity available, and then you just get dumped on. Um, so, uh, yeah, some plans, I think, are on the way for supporting lending protocols like Ava, Rary, and Yen. Um, what else? 
Yeah, the impermanent loss mitigation. I want to see that happening in uh, in a live environment because I think that's going to be a really attractive feature as well. Then the final piece on the journey, late November, early December, liquidity is going to be uh, begin flowing to exchanges. There's also talk of uh, NFTs as well, playable toke mech. I'm not sure what's going on there. Let me see if I can find the article. Leaky Sunday, a closer look at the token Mac NFTs. The curtains will pull back this Leaky Sunday with a closer look into the Tokeverse. So they're kind of gamifying it, um, creating NFTs that will be the pilots. Uh, these pilot NFTs will serve as the entry point to the token Mac Metaverse. Pilots will be able to craft mech parts from which they will assemble playable token mechs. And both ownership of pilots as well as participation in the token Mac ecosystem will generate the raw material required to craft items. What on earth does this have to do with, with anything? I think they're just having fun. Their Genesis event was not a Genesis event, it was a D-Genesis event. So, gives you an idea. So DeFi, so cool. Uh, that is Tokamak. If Scoopy Troubles is excited, I'm excited. And you probably should be too. As always, if you have a suggestion for us to cover in First Look, drop it in the comments below. Liquidity, going to be a big deal in the next couple of years. Who's got it? Where is it? This is what we need. I'll see you on the next one. Peace!